Hi there, I'm Zen and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are dealing with Visual Studio Code Basics where we are going to open up a folder, uh, explain what folders are required for web design, create any folders that we need to, and create the basic files that we need uh, before we start on a web page. So that includes the JavaScript page, the CSS file, and of course the important HTML file. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so if you've watched the previous video in this series, uh, you'll have seen us install Visual Studio Code as well as open up um, the folder. But if you didn't, not a problem, we're gonna open that folder up again. When you start up Visual Studio Code, you may have this welcome page, uh, which shows you recent folders, and this is the one actually I'm using here. Um, or if you don't have that set up, it'll look like this, okay? Now the first thing to see is whether or not you've actually got your folders already opened and you'll see that by opening up the Explorer and as you can see here uh, I don't have a folder open so it says open folder and you can just click that or you can go to file open folder as well so we're just going to click on it now I've got mine on my desktop okay so let's just go to desktop and go into learning and as we can see we've already got some files there now depending on your machine it is, as you saw there it will flash or it might uh, hang a bit while it's reloading the pages up. It sort of restarts Visual Studio Code from what I can tell. Okay, so we have four folders in here, but first of all, let's talk about the folder I just opened. This is called, I've called it Learning, and this is known as the root folder. And this level in your website is called the root. And every website you make sh must have a root folder. Okay, you think of it as uh, you know, ground zero on a website, and this is normally where we put our pages. So we have different type of files that we can use in web design. The most common one everyone thinks about is, of course, the HTML file. Okay, and normally your HTML file will live in what we call the root here. Okay, so this this area, the bit you can see that's been highlighted in this blue uh, border, is called a root, and uh, our HTML files will go in there. Now, believe it or not, HTML files are by default absolutely ugly. They are terrible. They look absolutely horrible. And the reason for that is, is HTML pages, web pages, weren't originally designed to look nice. And what we need to use is use CSS files. Uh, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And uh, these are what beautify our website. These are what makes our website look nice. And the the best way that I can think about this is always explaining IKEA. Okay, we all know IKEA, the land of Sweden and meatballs. Okay. And basically when you buy an, an item from IKEA, you'll walk around the shop, go all oh, that bookcase looks really nice. I'll buy that bookcase. Um, of course you tend to be quite an old fart like me to actually think like that, but let's not worry about that. So we buy the bookcase and we take it home. Um and we, we unwrap it and what we find out is that it's flat pack and it doesn't look like the bookcase we saw in the shop. All we've got is a bundle of wood, maybe some screws, maybe some wooden dowels and if we're lucky, some glue. Okay, and you're like, well hang on a minute, this is, this is not what I wanted. And then within that pack we also find uh, the instruction manual, the, the sheet that tells us how to put it together. Okay, and it basically says, you know, if you've got wood piece A and B, then you screw G into these three holes to put, put it together. And that is essentially what CSS is to web design, all right? We, the, the browser is you, you're, you know, the human in this, okay? And CSS basically says, if you have a HTML element that looks like this, or it's called this, then I want it displayed like that. And that's what makes your website look pretty. If you don't have that, then trust me, your website will look ugly. And if you're like me, even with CSS, it'll probably still look ugly. Okay, and then the next one we have is images. And I'm pretty sure that should make sense to you. Uh, anything like GIF files, PNG files, JPEG files. Um, there's WebP files as well. Basically, any images go in there. I would also extend that to include things such as uh, videos as well. 
You could really call it an assets folder. I just call it images out of history. You can call it whatever you want. Then we have one called JS, which is JavaScript. So again, any files we create for our JavaScript files, uh, any JavaScript files we create, will go in that folder. And then we have this one called SCSS. Now, um, I think technically it's called Sassy CSS. Um, and this is sort of like, we'll call it a more advanced way of doing S, uh, CSS, okay? SCSS is sort of like a, a semi-programming way of doing CSS. It's something that a lot of people are into at the moment. I can understand why. It can make your life a bit easier doing sort of uh, shorthand code to some degree. And we'll look at that uh, a little bit later on. We're not going to do that early on in these videos. We're going to do those later on. But they would go in there. And I say any other file uh, that's really left is your HTML file that goes here. With one exception. And that is fonts. Now, we will be looking at fonts. We'll be looking at Google fonts. Um, and you have two options that you can either download those to your machine or you can still have them hosted on Google's website. I personally prefer to download them. Okay. And the reason for that is it means I've got control over them. If by any weird chance Google decides to update that font, remove that font, um, or anything like that, uh, you know, it could have a great effect on your website. And to be honest, these files are small. There's no hardship on having them on your website itself. Now, where would you put those? I actually put them in my CSS folder, and what we normally do is create a folder for them, or this is what I do. So you can see here, there's actually a create a folder icon. So you can click on there, or you can right click on CSS and select new folder. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. We'll just do this way for now, new folder. And so I'm gonna put it in as fonts. Now you can see here that because the, font, uh, the CSS folder is empty, as is the fonts folder, uh, they sort of show on the same line. This can cause problems later on, and we'll look at those problems and how to fix it. But now we know what goes into them, it's about time we actually made something. So again, what we're going to do is first of all create our HTML file. So what we're going to do is to left click into space here, and we're going to right click and then select new file. The other option again is make sure it's selected, and then you can press new file there. But this time I'm going to do this. And we're just going to call this one, I don't know, demo.html. Okay. And as you can see, it creates a completely empty HTML file. We can use emit by typing htm, and then we can scroll down to the code on five. Now you can do that using your mouse or the up and down arrows on your keyboard. And again, you can click on it or press enter and that will create the basic HTML page that we need. What we're also going to do is create a CSS file and a JavaScript file to go with it. So I'm going to right click on my JavaScript folder. Okay, so left click first to select it, right click, new file, and I'm going to call this again demo.js. And then, now this is where people will often make mistakes. Okay, so CSS here, you notice how I've clicked on the word CSS and then right clicked to select new file. And we're going to call this again demo.css. Now, what you'll notice is that it's probably actually in the fonts folder. Okay, now we can check this by, we can actually drag this around, see? Now, if I move it into the CSS, see how it goes a little bit uh, shady there? And I let go. It says, do we want to move it into CSS? We want to move it, and there we go. So you can see that, you know, often when people do this, they make a mistake. I do it every now and then, where it goes into the wrong folder. So obviously, if you click on that there, and then do new file, I'm just going to call it demo2. Okay, we can see it's in the right place. I'll just get rid of it, because I don't need it. Um, just press and delete key on it. Okay, and that's also a way that you can move files around. You can just click on them and drag them. Okay, you see here where this goes all great, it means it's going to the root. I can let go. There we go. And I want to move it back in. Like I say, if I put it there, it'll go into the fonts folder. If I move it to there, it'll go into the CSS folder. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is to link the three up. Now, where they go, or where the link code goes, is in here in the head section. And they go underneath the title. And it's important to know that the 
CSS connection should happen before the JavaScript. So to do the CSS, it is the link rule. And again, we can use the Emmet to help us. So as you see, I typed in li. All I'm going to do is scroll down to the CSS and press enter. Now, as you see, it does give me this default one called style. Okay. Now, this is what we call a relative link. And relative links means basically from where I am, you should be able to see the file. So where I am, this is where you need to go. And because this is in the same folder or it's claimed to be in the same folder, it's actually looking for a file called style CSS here. Okay. In the root. Ours is not in the root. It's in the CSS folder. So we have to change this address so that it catches the right one and we need to rename it to demo CSS. And again, uh, Visual Studio Code helps us here. So all we need to do is press the backspace or what you would normally call the, the delete key. Okay. And because it is a CSS folder, that's what I'm going to type in CSS. And then I'm going to use the forward slash and you'll see that again, Visual Studio Code is trying to help us. It's going, oh, you've gone into your CSS folder. I can see there's another folder called fonts. Maybe you want to go in there or do you want to use this file? So I shall click on demo CSS and it's made that connection for us. Okay. And that is perfect. All right. It's very important that this word or this section here, rel style sheet is there, not style sheets with an S, but style sheet. If this isn't in here, even if this reference is correct, it will not render any of the styles in that sheet. Okay. Now, like I said, this is a relative address. You can also put in absolute address such as HTTP colon forward slash forward slash my site dot com forward slash CSS forward slash demo dot CSS. If your website is called my site dot com. Okay. And then the one below it will be for the JavaScript file. And um, now with JavaScript, we actually use the tag script. And again, you can see Emmett's trying to help us and we can press down and select the one with SRC for source. Okay, you can see straight away it puts the cursor in the uh, source area here. And again, we can see that it's in the JS folder. So we can do JS and forward slash. And again, you can see we've got demo dot JS. And there it is. We have all three pages all in the correct place. Okay, the HTML page, the JavaScript file, and the CSS file. And they're all connected correctly. And that's it. That's the end of this video. Like I said, we're not going to do much here. In the next video, we're going to start adding a few bits and pieces and uh, seeing how they work. If there's anything else you want me to add, just put it in below. Um, if you think there should be another folder in here, Okay, um, put it in the comments. In fact, this images one, what do you think you should call it? Okay, I call it images. You know, if you think you should call it something else, uh, put it in the comments below for me and let me know. Okay, but as I said, that's the end of this video. See you guys next time. I'm Zen, signing off.